It is good to be in the house of the Lord today. I welcome everyone here. This is Children's Day in St. Matthew's Church. And uh, we thank God for our children. A wonderful looking group of young ladies down here. All complete with smiles. Yeah, okay. And one that had to work on it just a little. But we got it. And uh, we praise God for that. So let's begin our time with prayer. And then we'll sing our first hymn. Heavenly Father, thank you for the blessing you give us. Thank you for the opportunity that we have today to set aside time as a church family to say thank you so much for our children. We love them dearly and pray, Father, that you would bless them throughout this day. Not only bless them, Father, in their input into the service, but bless them as they enjoy it and hear it and sing it together with all of us. May you watch over us as we dedicate this time to you. And pray, Father, in your richest blessings upon us all. We pray this now in your name. Amen. Amen. Turn with me to the number 251. And let's sing together, Jesus Loves Me. Blessed are the pure in heart, 
for they shall see God. God. Being pure is like having a clean heart. Like the heart inside of us that pumps blood and keeps us alive. And it keeps something. And if something wrong goes wrong with our heart, we won't work right. Jesus is talking about the place where we think and make decisions, why we do things, and our thoughts. If you keep in mind thoughts and decisions of good, God says we'll understand him more. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. The simplest way to explain this is someone who makes peace. Helping others to get along would be a great big part of it. The second part of this beatitude says, then we sh you should be called the children of God. Being God's child would mean that you truly are part of God's family and that you're starting to be more like Him, just like we are with our parents. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. God knows that being who He wants is not the way the world acts. By doing the opposite of the world, we will be made fun of. Or worse, because people don't understand why we don't do things only for ourselves. By living, living a life, doing things for others, confuses the way the world thinks. A lot of people in the word world won't want beauty, money. They don't care about the others as long as they get what they want. This is the opposite to the life God wants us to lead. Doing the right thing isn't easy, but God wants us to know that the kingdom of heaven is waiting for us if we can get through the tough times in life. The Beatitudes end saying that we should rejoice and be glad because by following these we will receive great treasures in heaven. God promises that we will be blessed if we follow these teachings, but it won't be easy. We are still figuring out how to do all these things. Don't be discouraged. Call God. God calls us to be different than the rest of the world. Keep in mind that the Beatitudes are impossible to do without God's help. He wants to be to help and be a big part of decisions that you make and that you will do. Jesus don't give us these Beatitudes and then wants us to fail. He wanted us to give us something to aim for, to work on our whole life and to try to achieve it. He wants us to try our best and give us a life full of blessings and reward us even bigger in heaven someday. Our attitudes are different. Every one of us have and should have different attitudes every single day. We have some important children of God today that are going to tell you their attitudes and how, what their attitude is that they're carrying today. They're all different, just like you and I. But we all have one thing in common, and that's the love of God. We have Rachel. We have Kay. We have Tessa. We have Miley.
You got friends? <laughs> One of you has friends. Okay. <laughs> I bet all of you have friends. But today I want to talk about friends because friends can help you understand what is the right thing to do or friends can give you the wrong instructions, the wrong idea, and they can take you somewhere where you don't really want to go. Okay? So we're going to talk about friends. Now, the Bible says in the book of Galatians, and you have this in your Bibles, Paul said, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from present evil according to the will of God the Father. And then Paul says, but I'm really astonished that you listen to people who tell you things to do that are wrong to do. So friends can be helpful or friends can, can give, give a lot of instructions to you or suggestions that end up being completely wrong and take you away from what God's will is for your life. So, I think I want to talk about friends, but I'm going to let these <coughs> classes represent those friends, okay? And these are four friends right here. Now, Everybody has the same thing happen to them. You see, because the Bible says that God gives us all life. So now, you, glasses don't seem to have any life, but just pretend with me for a minute that God gives everybody life. Now, I'm going to say that what I have in this picture is life. Okay? You, you agree with that? Is that okay? Okay, good. One of you agrees. <laughs> so, let's just pour a whole glass full of life in every one of these glasses. Okay? <laughs> wow! It appears like life is different. Chip cookies. And mom said, no. 
Because if you eat chocolate chip cookies, you're going to be up all night. You're going to be bouncing off the walls. You're going to have so much sugar, you're going to want to play all night long, and you're not going to be able to go to sleep. So mom said, no, no chocolate chip cookies. So when it came time, they went to bed. And then this little girl said, guess what? After mom and dad go to bed, we got to sneak down to the kitchen and get a cookie. She'll never know. She'll just never know. Now, you ever snuck down and got a cookie? Don't tell us. Yeah, <laughs> mom is here. Okay. But, you see, God says that there's a rule. The rule is, obey your mom and dad. But this little one is saying, I know mom said no cookies, but if we go down and sneak one, she's never going to know. And this one, whose heart really didn't think much about Jesus either, this one said, I'm with you all the way. Let's sneak down and have a cookie. But you see, this one was a Christian. And this one was a Christian. Their hearts were pure by the, by the love they had for the Lord, and they obeyed the Lord. But this one, you know, was kind of weak. They didn't read their Bible. They didn't pray very much. And so they were kind of on the weak side of things. And so this one said, you know what? I think that would be okay. So they all went to the kitchen. This is the kitchen now, okay? They all went to the kitchen. And they snuck a cookie. And they ran back up to the room and they had the cookie. Now, several things are taking place. Number one, they disobeyed the mom. Number two, they stole the cookies. See, stealing is also against God. They were supposed to take those cookies because the mom said no. And so anyway, they all went back up to the room where they were having the slumber party. And we know that this one's heart was stained with sin, wasn't it? And this one was pure and righteous, but oh no, look at this. Now, their heart is stained with sin too. And of course, this one's heart was already stained with sin. So, it's just not a good picture. Because when one of our friends tells us to do something that is wrong, and we do it, then we sin. Then we sin, don't we? And God doesn't want us to sin. Well, this one said, no, I'm not going to do it. So her heart stayed pure and righteous in the sight of God. Now, God wants us all to be righteous. He wants us all to do what he wants us to do. And he doesn't want us to sin. But now, three out of the four friends have sinned. And so their heart is not right with God. This one, on the other hand, says, you know what? You know what I think would be a good thing to do? I, I think I would like to invite you guys all to come to church with me. Because if you go to church with me, you're going to hear about Jesus because my Sunday school teacher or my junior church teacher is going to tell you about Jesus. And then my pastor is going to preach about how Jesus can forgive us of, of our sins from doing wrong things. And then you can have a heart that is pure. And you know what they did? You know what, you know what this one's three friends did at that point? They laughed at her. Ha ah, 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 I go to church. No way. We're not going to church. Ha! Ah, never happened. But she kept asking them to go to church. And so, one Sunday, maybe a month later, they all said, okay, we're going to go to church with you. So off to church, they went, this is not church, okay? They all went to church, every one of them, and they heard the junior church teacher tell them how Jesus can forgive sins, and they heard that junior church teacher to say that, you know, you've got to have the right attitudes. What are the right attitudes, girls? Huh? 
You just told us what they are. But anyway, they all went to church. And they all learned that they had done something wrong. And then they went and heard the preacher preach. And you know what the preacher said? He said, you know, if you just give Jesus your heart and you ask him to forgive you of your sins, you can have a pure and clean heart. So the next day when they all get up and went to school again, this one was a Christian with a pure heart. And this one was a Christian with a pure heart. And guess what? This one was a Christian with a poor heart. Never can you guess. This one was a Christian with a pure heart. You see, because when you ask Jesus to forgive you of sin, he does, and he makes your heart pure and clean all the way through. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, it is. You didn't hear a very enthusiastically saying yes. <laughs> So, we're going to pray, and we're going to ask Jesus to make sure that we don't have a sin in our heart, and we're not doing things that are wrong, but we're doing things that He likes and He approves of, okay? And then we're going to sing a song. Let's pray. Gracious Father, I want to thank you so much for the wonderful message that we have received today from Talashi and his friend and from Miss Mavis and from the girls who have told us the right attitudes that we are to have. But we also thank you, Lord, that we know that if we've done something wrong, and your word tells us what it is that's wrong and what it is that's right, but if we've done something wrong, Father, if we've disobeyed our parents, if we've taken something that wasn't ours, if we've had a bad attitude of any kind toward our friends, that you will forgive us. And so today I pray that you forgive every one of us for those things that we may have done. And Lord, that you would purify our hearts like we have seen in this little example. That you would make us clean no matter what. And Father, we know that you will do that because you said you would if we asked. And so I pray with Lord all of these wonderful, precious girls I think today. And I ask that you would help them to make sure that they do what Jesus wants them to do. And if they know they've done anything wrong, that they can simply say, Jesus, please forgive me. And you will do that for them. May you now bless them and bless us, Lord, as we have enjoyed this time of worship together. May all of our hearts be touched by these messages. And we'll thank you for it in your name. Amen. Amen. And now there is a song that we're going to sing called This Little Light of Mine and it's on the back of the bulletin which I don't have. So why don't we stand together and sing This Little Light of Mine.
to close our service. <coughs> Father, today we do thank you for your love. We do thank you for the one great God that has done this.